Yo guys, what's up here? I'm chilling in my hot tub. Here in my hot tub with all my hose. As you can see, there they all are. There are there are all my hose, all of them. So yeah, I figured you guys would, would like this format of a video, because I know most of you guys are crazy like me. So yeah, we're doing some hot tub thoughts. We're doing some hot tub thoughts. Need to get more in the water. It's, it's cold out here, it's winter. I love my hot tub in the winter. So, gonna drop some hot hot tub thoughts. Here are my hot tub thoughts for today. I'm gonna talk to you about the difference between execution and innovation. And this applies to not only card games, but life in general. All competitive endeavors, in fact. All competitive endeavors. So I've noticed that, you know, people have different strategies for trying to succeed at something. And... You know, these sort of general strategies are either execution or innovation. And most people sort of fall into one camp or the other. And executors, not to be confused with executioners, of course, because that's that would be like killing people. That's not what we're talking about. Executors are people who sort of learn the fundamentals of whatever it is they're trying to succeed at. They learn the fundamentals and try to execute them as well as possible. Try to execute them perfectly, to a T. And that's pretty important, but it has its flaws, which we're going to talk about. And the other people are innovators. These are people who try to succeed by coming up with new ways to do things, right? They don't sort of take what's worked for other people and try to execute it as perfectly as possible. They are people who are coming up with new ways to do things better than other people. So you might think, well, I bet Alan thinks that being an innovator is better than being an executor. And that is not true, because being an innovator has its downsides as well. And you all are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, because you've seen these people all the time, right? Imagine you're going to your TCG locals, and you're talking to some scrub, and he's like, yeah, man, I think I broke the meta. I got this sweet new deck that's gonna shit on everyone. And you're like, motherfucker, you've never even top eight of the locals before. What the hell are you talking about? And that is sort of like, shows the flaws in innovations, right? It's like, you gotta walk before you run. And innovating is kind of like running. Executing is like walking. So to like use an analogy, say we're doing like a, a professional race, right? We're, we're doing, doing, doing the race tracks. And there's sort of like two components to like being able to like win the race, right? One is you gotta be a good driver, right? Like if you don't know how to drive a car, you're not gonna win the race. And the other is having a, a good car, right? You know, a sweet, fast car, faster than all the other cars. Now you kinda need both these together, right? Because if I got a fast car, but I'm a shit driver, I'm not gonna win the race. But if I'm a good driver, but I'm racing a Toyota Prius or whatever, I'm not gonna win the race either. So executing, that's kind of like driving the car. Innovating is kind of like building a better car. So when most people like start playing games, trading card games in particular, what I've noticed is, is they sort of start out trying to be innovators. They try to be original, right? They're like, oh, the point of this game is to be creative, right? I don't want to copy everyone else. So they try to be creative, and like that guy who's never top eighted your locals, all of their like creative attempts kind of fail miserably. They're like, man, this sucks. I'm like trying to break the meta, but it's not working. And so eventually, what what typically happens, I mean, or it doesn't happen, or they just are a scrub forever. That's one thing that could happen. But usually what happens, at some point they give up and say, all right, screw it. I'm going to just copy the deck that won the last event, try to learn all the basic plays and do that. And then once they do that, they, uh, they usually find that they win, like, a lot more, especially, like, at locals, right? It's like one day they're going, like, 2-3 at their locals, and the next they're, like, making top 8. And they're like, shit, why didn't I do this before? Why wasn't I doing this before? So, so then they sort of move from being an innovator to being an executor, right? They sort of copy whatever won the last event. They make, like, a couple of card changes, but they mostly just copy, right? And they say, okay, I'm going to try to make misplays as little as possible. It's a very linear process, right? At first, you're like misplaying, you know, maybe half the time, and then it's only 
20 percent of the time and then 10 percent of the time and then five percent of the time and one percent of the time and eventually they're like barely misplaying at all and they like kind of hit a plateau and i've noticed this i've noticed this happen to a lot of people i've uh, a lot of people who you know were even sort of more technically talented than myself where they're misplaying far less often than i am you know they like kind of hit this brick wall and, and this brick wall happened to me too. It happened to me in about 2011 or so, with, with Yu-Gi-Oh in particular. Where I was sort of like playing pretty standardish decks, going like nine tootle a lot of YCSs, miss, you know, barely missing the top cut, like five events in a row. And I was getting kind of frustrated. And a lot of people get very frustrated. Maybe they blame luck. They go, oh, I was playing the best deck, but you know, if this guy hadn't top decked so well, I would have won or whatever. Some people blame luck. Um, some people, you know, try to think about what it is they can do differently. And sort of the, the problem that occurs here, the problem that occurs is that they usually don't say to themselves, well, maybe I should go back to being creative, right? Because being less creative, that's what got them to such a high level to begin with, right? That's what got them to where they are, right? By sort of Stop being original and copying other people. That's like what got them all their wins. I mean, that's what got me my wins too, you know? <clears throat> and, you know, sort of mid-2005, you know, I was like a scrub going like 3-4 at regionals, going, you know, 3-2 at locals. And, you know, I, I started copying some winning deck lists, and all of a sudden, like, players who would never have thought that they would possibly lose to me they're like, man, this this ACP kid is like, you know, crushing locals now by, you know, just sort of copying these decks and playing them well. So it's like you remember that, right? You remember how you got to where you were. And, you know, you, you sort of know, you know, you, you know that guy at locals, right? You know that guy who's going, oh, yeah, I, I think I broke the meta. But it's like he's not even top eighting locals. He's not even top eighting locals. So what the hell does he know? And he doesn't know very much. He, he really doesn't. Because he, he's trying to run before he walks. But if you've already learned how to walk, well, then the next step is, is sort of to learn how to run, right? So if I'm, I'm a race car driver and I can drive perfectly, I can execute all the turns, you know, I know the physics behind how to drive an S-curve or whatever, or all the, you know, fancy things they do. You know, I know when to brake, you know, when to, when to accelerate, you know, sort of I know all the fundamentals. Well, then the next step is, well, now I've got to build a better car, right? Now I've got to come up with a new car with new technology that's going to sort of allow me to get ahead of the competition now that I know how to drive. It's the same thing with card games, right? Once you know all the fundamentals, once you understand the meta, once you're making the right plays, the next step is to come up with something new. You need to give yourself tools that other people don't have, right? You know, if you have all of the same tools that everyone else has, you'll either do just as well as them. You might get lucky and do better, but then you might get unlucky and do worse, right? You know, all of your performance at that point will just be due to variance, right? You know, maybe sometimes you'll top eight your locals, sometimes you'll win your locals, right? Maybe, you know, sometimes you uh, top eight your regionals, sometimes you don't, right? You're just kind of showing up with standard decks, standard plays, executing well, and hoping that today is going to be your lucky day. And sometimes it will be. Sometimes it will be. But, you know, in order to get to the next level, right, in order to not just be an achiever, but be a super achiever, be a step above everybody else, right, be, you know, a, a Patrick Hoban or a Billy Brake or a Jeff Jones, in order to be one of those kinds of people, it's, it's no longer enough to um, just execute well, to execute better than everyone else you now have to give yourself a better toolbox than what they have you have to have you know new plays that other people haven't thought of you have to have new tech that other people haven't thought of you have to have new decks that other people haven't thought of new versions of decks that other people haven't thought of you know new side deck cards that other people haven't thought of and this can be like a, a difficult shift in mentality to have um, and it took me many years to adopt this shift. You know, I was in that plateau mode for a couple of years, and it took me a while to, like, sort of start taking risks. 
and say, you know, may maybe I should uh, try, you know, Aestheticism Samurai. That right? That was a deck that I took to YCS when most people thought, oh, that that can't possibly be good. Or Gishki, right? That was a deck that I top 32 to YCS and people thought it was a joke. People were like, this deck isn't even tier two. This deck sucks. They weren't even willing to try it, right? Um, you know, same thing in, in Go format, right? When I first built Angel Chaos, people were like, this deck is garbage. This deck is a joke. This deck can't ever win. Um, and, you know, the first few matches I went, people were like, oh, oh, he got lucky. Or they go, well, ACP is really good. So even though he's playing a bad deck, um, he's he's just, you know, he's just running well and, and playing well. Deck isn't good. And then eventually, you know, by the time they caught on, it was kind of too late, right? Um, the goal isn't to know about a deck when everyone else does. The goal is to know about a deck before everyone else does. And in order to do that, you have to take risks. And what you have to understand about innovating is that it's not a linear process. It's not like learning how to execute well. When you're learning how to execute, you're just sort of learning the fundamentals, learning the rules, learning the plays. A lot of it is sort of like almost muscle memory in a way where you just sort of, after repeating the same play over and over again, you just know that, oh yeah, this is the right play here. This is how you do it. When you're coming up with new ideas, when you're getting creative, when you're innovating, um, a lot of your ideas won't work. And even to this day, most of my ideas don't work. It's, it's, it's just a fact. Most of my ideas don't work. Um, and that could be frustrating for some people, knowing that, you know, for every sort of new idea that they test, nine out of ten are just going to be shit ideas. And it's like, damn, I just wasted all that time. But the one out of ten that isn't shit, that's the one that allows you to crush the next event. And if you do that process before every event, testing all these new ideas, um, then that's how you just crush events over and over again, right? I mean, we saw people like, you know, Patrick Hope being the classic example. You would just show up to event after event with new technology that no one else had, and it takes work. It takes risk. It takes... Um, you know, it, it takes it takes motivation. You have to understand like what uh, what you're getting yourself into, right? And what you're getting yourself into is that, um, you know, that a lot of ideas aren't going to work, um, and, and that's just just a fact. So, you know, it, if you're sort of at the stage where you're not winning like fifty percent of your matches yet it's probably not an innovation problem, it's probably an execution problem. Because you don't really need to innovate to have like a 60% win rate, right? Like you just need to execute a little better than everyone else. That's the issue. But if you're like been stuck at a plateau for a very long time, and you're like, yeah, I don't think I'm misplaying. No one else tells me that I'm misplaying. And I'm playing good decks, you know, I'm, I'm copying sort of the winning plays and the winning decks that I see from other people, but I'm still not doing as well as I'd like. Then the issue is innovation. That's the issue. Um, and just beating your head against the wall, trying to go from, you know, executing correctly 99.8% of the time to 99.9% .9 of the time, that's not the solution. Like, it's at some point, you start to, like, run into diminishing returns, so to speak. At some point, you gotta, like, get outside of your comfort zone and start thinking about, like, what you can do differently. And sort of that philosophy, that's kind of been, I, I feel like understanding that process, transitioning from executing to innovating, that has explained like a lot of my success in the last few years, not just with like TCGs, but other things like poker, right? When I started out playing poker, I wasn't trying to like come up with like super sick new plays that like pros hadn't thought of yet, right? I was just trying to learn the fundamentals. And even now in poker, I'm mostly still learning the fundamentals. Um, you know, I do try to get creative every once in a while. I do put a lot of thought into the game, but it's mostly executing well, not coming up with some, like, sick new thing that people haven't thought of yet. It's the same thing with, like, your job, too, right? Like, if, if you're starting a new job, step one is just learn how to do the job as well as everyone else does. Step two is come up with new ways that allow you to do your job even better, and then you get promoted, right? That's the idea. So yeah, that's my hot tub thoughts for today.
drop a comment below. Let me know how you liked my hot tub thought. Peace out, dudes.